Hello and welcome to Crank and Crank Spotlight on the history and game of bocce ball. Throwing balls against the target is actually the oldest known game to mankind. In 5000 BC, the Egyptians played a game very similar to bocce ball using polished rock. The Egyptians introduced the game to the Greeks, who then in turn introduced it to the Italians, and need I say, the rest is history. However, in Venice, they actually imprisoned and placed fines on people that played bocce ball, which is kind of amazing. And then to take it one step further, the Catholic Church actually condemned people that played in the game because they found it as a form of gambling. The game of bocce ball was introduced to what then became known as the legend of Fanny. Now Fanny, mind you, is not actually a player that played bocce at all. However, she became very famous because all the players that ended up losing would actually have to go and kiss Fanny's behind. So that's how the legend began. Now even in today's clubs, what they do is someone that doesn't even score a point in the game, even if they're playing from up to 7 or 12, if they lose, they have to go and kiss a symbolic reference. It could be a photo of Fanny or a statue of Fanny. Now, let's hope that you are not kissing a lot of your own Fanny while you play the game of bocce ball. The most important part of bocce is selecting the right opponent. You don't want to pick somebody that you think is going to basically beat you. So for me, personally, I go for someone shorter stature, maybe a little younger, someone that I know I could probably handle. So let's see if we can find anybody here today that kind of fits that mold and would be a perfect opponent for me in this exciting game called bocce ball. Let's go. We have uh, two people coming down right now. Remember, it's all in who you pick as your opponent. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm uh, actually doing a, a small documentary here on the history of bocce. And I'm not too familiar if you know what bocce ball is. Yeah, yeah. Consider how uh, good, good, good. They actually know what it is, so it does have some history. The Italians brought it here. Here it is, and we're in Wildwood. All right, this is great. So, wanted to see if uh, you wanted to play. I'll play instead. Yeah, that, that, that's okay. I'm, it's okay. You don't. You really don't want to play. Me. Come on. No, I, I actually would like to, to play you. Remember, it's all in who you pick as an opponent, and I would like to play her. You possibly can play later. Do you want to play? All right. Should she I just play? plays. Play. Okay. All right. Let me introduce you to the uh, to the set. All right, so I'm Crank and Frank. You have to, you know, formally address your opponent as well. Crank and Frank. Abby. Nice to meet you, Abby. All right, so now we're going to go through a little bit of the game before the game. So the game can be played with two players or two teams of two or four players. So now we're just going to be playing one-on-one. -on -one. If you take a look down at our ball selection, you're going to be red or green. And here's the little ball. This one's either called the Paulini or the Jack. Okay? We're going to throw this ball out first. And then the object is to try to get these other balls as close to this ball as possible. The person that gets the ball, these bigger balls, closest to this little ball, that is how you score points. And the points are scored, uh, the game typically goes either up to 7 or up to 12. So we're now going to throw this Paulini out. And then each one of us will take turns throwing the remaining four balls out to see who can score the most points in this game. So we'll continue on. All right, my opponent will first uh, throw the ball. If you would, please try to get closer to the Paulini. Wow, that was a good throw. Wow, very impressive. I guess that one was pretty bad. Not bad, not bad at all. She right now is in the lead, but I'm not too far behind with two balls left to knock her out, so go ahead. Wow, that 
that was very impressive. Knocked mine right out. I don't know if I stand a chance. Alright, it looks like I've got the last throw here. I'm actually losing, if you can actually believe it. Um, I've got to strategically try to place this ball somewhere to avoid being shellacked. There it goes. There goes nothing. And nothing. Uh, typically you play 7 to 12 points, but here to condense the time to give you an idea of uh, the history of bocce ball and how to play it, uh, looks like I went down in flames. Did I pick the right opponent? I'm not sure. What we've decided, I spoke it over with Gail, we're actually going to play a full game instead of just throwing two balls to see who would really win this. So I'm going to throw first, hopefully changing the color to green will uh, change my luck, so let's see what happens. Yeah, not a badly placed ball, if I must say so myself. You, uh, would? I'm winning, right? Um, you are not winning. Very impressive. Not as good as I would have liked. <laughs> she has a chance of knocking me out and she does not. Gail has just said to me that, oh, she was very impressed that she had the farthest balls from the Paulini or the Jack. Not as impressive in this particular game. Really? So, yeah, exactly. I never played before, so I thought that was going She said that she has never played before, and that was the point of the game. I now take a look back and saying that you have to pick your opponent properly. And I did not pick my opponent properly in the first matchup where I got something handed to me. So I should have picked her. So going against my own theory, I hope you've enjoyed the history and the game of bocce. Maybe you might see me on the beach sometime and I might select you to play. Frank and Frank on the history of bocce. Catch you next time.